and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host, Heather Baker. Yes, and we are here with Kenneth Zierman of White Line Darko. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. I... We're, we're super excited. I You've got a new, uh, I'll, I'll say you've got a new C, new uh, double single coming out. Yeah. And it's kind of your third, third work, and I'm excited to talk about it. It, there's something, it's kind of psychedelic. There's something that, I, I grew up in the 70s. And there's something that reminds me so much of a lot of what I listened, what my parents listened to as a kid and what I listened to as a kid. There's this like Sills and Croft, some of the musician, especially with the times, it sounds like a, a seek and spay, seek and, or seek and spell, speak and spell. Oof, yeah, there, yeah. say that time, time fast. But there's that, you know, there's that kind of early electric game sound to yep. it. Yep. You know, and I just love it. And I love the, the songs are complex, but they, they're kind of seem to be rooted in keyboards that are, that are easy to follow. Yeah. And it's so tell us a little bit, tell us about White Line Darko. It's, you were the founder, but you've picked up some other folks and are you all from Duluth? Um, three of us are from Duluth. Uh, our bassist is from the Twin Cities. Okay. So White Line Darko is a four-piece band from Minneapolis, and um, it consists of guitar, which I play. Uh, my name's Kenneth, by the way. Um, then there's a bass player. His name's Matthew Nicolai, and he's the one from the cities. Um, ben Olette is our drummer. He's from Duluth. Um, and Nolan Jusila plays keyboards, and he is from Duluth as well. So, yeah, I mean, the band started as just a solo project for myself a couple years ago. And um, I, I just made it with the hope of getting a, a full band together at some point, you know, like creating music myself that would uh, ideally draw in like minded musicians and, uh, you know, take it from there. So that's kind of what's happened. And how did you connect with these guys? Did you know them from home, you know, or? Or did the music draw in? <laughs> the music, I think definitely had a part in the process. Um, I, I released a whole album that has all the parts and uh, like singing and whatnot performed by myself. It's the first White Line Darko album. It's available everywhere. Um, and then after that kind of came out, people started getting an idea of what I was going for. Um, I started putting the pieces together. So I met Matthew, our bassist, through um, well, his girlfriend, who's now his wife. Uh, um, I met her at the college I was attending, and she heard me play a Wilco song. At, uh, like, uh, we, we both had the same vocal teacher, and we had to do like these open mic things. So I sang a Wilco song. She's like, wow, someone at this college knows who this indie band is, or whatever. You should. And then her follow-up was like, you should talk to my boyfriend. I was like, okay, cool. Like, uh, I will. And yeah, I met him, super cool. So he started playing bass with me. Um, Nolan was living up in Duluth at the time. Um, and I was kind of able to convince him to move down. Um, so he, we became roommates and I was like, listen, we need someone to fill this keyboard spot. And I knew, I knew Nolan from Duluth. Um, we both went to the same piano academy up there uh, in West Duluth. So I knew he had the chops and he came down and hopped in and then uh, the band went through like three drummers uh, in a period of like a year, which kind of was hilarious. It's like the classic rock band trope or whatever. Yeah, they, did they all blow up? Is that what you <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, we did have like one like pretty, the, the drummer that we had right before Ben uh, joined the band, we played one gig with him that didn't like go so well. It was all right. And uh, he left his snare drum with me and was like, all right, I'll pick that up from your house tomorrow. And I haven't heard from him since. I don't know. And it, like, I don't know, like seriously, he might as well have blown up or evaporated. Cause it's just like <laughs> so weird, like where did he go? And then after that happened, like a month later, um, my cousin, who uh, also grew up in Duluth, knew I was looking for a drummer, and he knew Ben from uh, the high school that they went to. So I didn't know Ben when I grew up in Duluth. I actually met him down in the cities. And um, 
yeah, I mean, we met instantly connected and so he's been the most recent addition and that's where we're at now, you know, four of us. So I'm wondering if there's something in the water in Duluth because it produces like some incredible musicians. And actually I'm wondering just because it's a harsher environment there, if you think it gives individuals more time to play music sitting in the house, you know, cause we can't, we don't have the, I mean, you can enjoy the outdoors obviously, but right. not as, not like a lot of people. So I'm just, I'm curious if you think that there is a correlation a little bit or that you growing up, if that gave you more time to focus on music too. Living in the cities is, I mean, you're still kind of getting that experience. I do think it's to a lesser degree. I mean, when you go up to Duluth, it's just, it's always like 15 degrees colder. There's four more inches of snow. It's just like more of that. So growing up, um, you know, but I, I first picked up a guitar at like 11 and that was my first foray into music. And, you know, I, so much just like sitting inside just like fiddling around with that thing you know and the, the, the thing about growing up in Duluth is like you have all that intense cold but once it gets warm like everyone's out everyone's like there's like art festivals and little concerts happening here and there and stuff so it was really nice to have that as well when like when there's just so much like creativity happening and different like venues around the city that you know once it got warm enough we were able to have some fun or whatever so the the elemental aspect of living in Duluth was definitely huge and just like the my digestion of music growing up you know so. you are clearly part of the music community there if you've got a shared singing teacher here and a shared piano to you know here and even if as you said even if you didn't know Ben growing up you were both part of the music community for at different peripheries. So that's, do you maintain that? Do you, are you trying to get, you know, are you, are you, do you feel as in encompassed in the, the twin cities scene or are you a good connector between the two? No, I mean, absolutely. I would, you know, I'm still somewhat connected to the scene in Duluth just because of some friends that I play and bands up there and, you know, uh, I don't make it as much, uh, make it up to Duluth as much as I'd like to these days to like catch some of that, but I do stay up to date with some of the like indie bands and, and whatnot that are popping right now. Um, in the cities, though, uh, yeah, I feel like really connected through like a, a bunch of different means. Um, I mean, just to list a few, like I, I help out every week. I, I guess you could say I'm like an assistant for the library studio in Northeast Minneapolis, which is run by Matt Patrick, Matt Patrick yeah. an absolute legend. And um, I've been helping him for a couple years now. And through that experience, I've got to meet so many of like the, just like absolute God level uh, studio musicians around the area. And like some of the touring musicians as well that are all you know, playing on each other's projects or, you know, just doing whatever the producer's asking. So that's been really cool to me, like paid musicians, people that have like pursued the field and like have made it, you know, and are sustaining themselves. And then there's also other things that are a little more like closer to home for me, like some other like local bands that are on the up and coming, I guess, and other people that I know that I resonate with, like, um, in St. Paul, there's this thing called the Flavor World. It's called- Flavor You've talked, World. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Flavor World is still somewhat newish on the scene, but have been around for a decent amount of time now. Uh, we did like a live set with them. And through that experience, we got to meet uh, Drew who runs- Drew, yeah. Just like the little, the little shop they got uh, going on over there. And just that, like, and I'm gonna, what's that? 
I, I was just going to say, because just, just, we, we have talked to that, you know, we've talked to Drew, but don't let that hold us back, hold you back from saying more because people listening now may, may not have heard that interview. So if you talk a little bit about what he does with the video and the merchandising and some of that is fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, Flavor World is like, a, I, I usually say it's a, it's like a collective to people because it is like, there's a, like a, a apparel aspect to flavor world and there's a music aspect of flavor world and it's just like a straight like painting on a canvas aspect of flavor world it but it all kind of centers around you know the themes of like creativity and originality and like trying to bring together um you know like-minded individuals or just people that maybe would never have met uh, you know through the lens of like creating art so now there's like all these bands that have met each other, like ourselves and these other bands through Flavor World. And now like shows are happening because of it. And I mean, Flavor World has put on a couple shows, which is, that's been a lot of fun. And so, I mean, through getting to know Drew at Flavor World and, and seeing what he does with like live sets for bands. I mean, there's a whole YouTube page with, I think they have like 25 live sets now from, wow from just all sorts of acts, like, you know, full bands to just a DJ who plays like a trumpet at the same time. And so many, so much like variants. It's really, really fun to see what he's done with that. And um, yeah, I would recommend to anyone that's interested in, in learning more about like the uh, young up and coming scene, I guess, of, of creatives should definitely look into Flavor World because I don't know. It's almost like everyone's tapped in at this point, or like it's getting there. It, it's hard to find people now who like don't haven't heard about it to some degree. Like you two, it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. just really cool. I wanted to ask since you said you had worked with for Matt Patrick at the library studio for a while. Is there since you've been there? Is there something that seeped in or inspired some of your? newer work too or an instrument or anything because i know he has like a box of all these cool things that you're like what the hell is this thing and then the thing the noises it makes it's like what that's so awesome so oh yeah i mean uh, from the first time i stepped into the library the first i, I got connected with matt originally because um, i was attending college uh, 2018, I think, or it might have been 2017 at the time, but I had to do an internship. And I was going to a private college where most of the students would do internships at like churches and stuff. Um, and I, sorry, I was going for a bachelor's in um, studio production. So uh, I had to do an internship that would expose me to some type of studio production. Most people went to like churches and stuff. But my advisor, could sense that I was not really into the worship music thing and was like, okay, I know this guy from the scene and I think, you know, he's a little more quirky too. I think you two will get along nicely. And from the first time I walked into the library, I was like, oh yeah, this is, it just felt immediately like home, immediately like, you know, I could just spend hours here and uh, get absolutely whisked away with like just the uh, fun of like creating, you know, whether it's like finding, you know, <laughs> some, some instrument from a different country that like you have to blow into a certain way, you know, once you figure it out, it's like, wow, I'm going to write a whole song on that or just, yeah. Um, I mean, and honestly, for me, like getting to watch Matt work and, and hear how Matt um, produces any array of artists has been huge for me as as like a songwriter and as a producer and a mixing engineer because he to, in my eyes he just does such an excellent job of um, hearing anyone that comes to him regardless of their like talent level or the type of music or like their like whatever he just like you'll know, understand who they are first before he starts like throwing out ideas or whatever and he always like I, I just have yet to see him fail in taking any artist and like giving them their favorite work or whatever, like feeling like they've been heard and what they've created is like what they were hoping for, you know, and Matt 
is able to like guide him through that. So watching him was just like, whoa, so much knowledge. So. How, how cool to be able to see that. And I, I do, Ann and I have interviewed a lot of people that have worked with him and the way that he does what you just said, see and hear and not try to bring people where they're not comfortable. He buffers them and then adds to the next level of their ability too. So I just think that's got to seep into what you're doing too or how you can push yourself and bandmates, I guess, also. Well, and I'll kind of bring that even more specific because as I said, the, the, the double single is the Times and Penthouse and I, and I enjoy them very much, but the, the Times especially seems to have so many different sounds going on. And we've talked to people, as, as Heather says, about the process of working with Matt Patrick. I imagine if you've worked with him in a different capacity, how, how do you go into that room? Do you, you know, how much collaboration did you know would happen and how many, much did happen and... How, tell us the backstory. At least start with the times. <laughs> sure. Um, so that that song started with just me writing it on guitar, um, pretty much from like start to finish. So I had the the chords, I had the progression, and like the lyrics. Then I brought that to the band, and everyone kind of wrote their own parts. You know, got the drum beat, got the bass line, and and when when I do that with the you know, with the guys in the band, I try and just like show them the song and explain like, here's, here's what I'm thinking, you know, vibe wise, or like, here's what the lyrics are, whatever. And then I just let them take it. And I, don't, I try not to like go like, oh, you got to play more like this or that, you know, because like, it just gets annoying, I feel like after a while, and people just want to like, you know, do the thing. And when that ha when I, I find when I do that, they always like make something that's way better than whatever I would have thought of that year. So then we get the band as tight, or we get the, the song as tight as we can, you know, just playing it in, our, in our, uh, my basement or whatever. And then we booked a studio date with Matt. And when we go into the studio, I mean, even for me, even though I've like worked with them, I still work with them on like a weekly basis. Um, I try and step in there as uh, an artist instead of, you know, because we are like paying him and you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'm trying to get my dollars worth. So it's like, um, you it's know, <laughs> with the intent of getting the song and also like, I mean, it, I guess it did help to like get that like behind the scenes look because I, I knew going in, if we just like let Matt do his thing, if you know, he just heard our song and, and let us like play it, you know, he would be able to take it to the next level. and. That's exactly what happened. So we just got in the studio and um, got the BPM and did like a track or two. And then he'd be like, oh, OK, so what if, you know, the bass line there, just like you added that one note. And we we're all like, OK, we, you know, we played this song for a couple of times. And then, we, and then we try it out and we're like, oh, my gosh. Like, I thought we had this song ironed out. And he just like, he could do it. You know, he just, he heard it. And, so all the, uh, with the times and with Penthouse, there's like these moments where he would hear like a certain part or something and just knew how to extrapolate it to the right kind of degree of um, effectiveness or whatever. And there wasn't really any uh, like bickering or, you know, I don't think that's it or whatever. You know, just let him do his producing thing. And I'm very happy with what we got, you know. Both of these signs, I feel like, are, they will be, like, the best thing that um, has come out under this White Line Darko, you know, thing. Um, very proud of, like, what everyone in the band has done. Just what we got, so. I was going to say, I liked, I liked the beginning, well, I liked the whole song, but I like Penthouse, where... It's your vocals, and then with the piano, I feel like it's very, I don't want to say low-cut Connie, but low-cut Connie, like, because it's so theatrical, but calm, I don't know, it's, it's demanding. I don't know how to explain it so much, but that's the feeling that I got with it, and I, I love it. 
And then when you add the horns and ev all the other instruments, you do a nice um, way of balancing everything. It's not like competing. It seems to be very balanced. Is that intentional or that's just how people did it? most of the time and so there's like an element of just like almost like you know uh, primal instinct or just like instant reaction you know where you're not really thinking about it you're just like going off like how is this making me feel right now and how do I you know how do I feel back about it and um Just how you bring balance with each other or work with each other, sort of? No, no, no. Uh, so we oh. like feel, so I just got kind of. It's that. okay. And then when we like get something that we like, you know, then we like try and like there's so much refining within the band where we'll play this song over and over and um, try and remain like critical as we're working it out. So it's not just like endless repetition like you know no we're trying to analyze any like fat that might be in the song and we're trying to you know if something doesn't sound quite right with like how i'm playing guitar and how the piano is lining up we're trying to figure out a way where it just really like comes together you know we're trying to create like a really synchronous experience um with with these songs so yeah there's definitely e even to like the um it, from production standpoint of how the instruments come together to the mixing standpoint you know like I, I mix both of these songs um, we recorded them at the studio but I mixed them myself and I wanted to get like a very like you know it's not about the guitar or the piano or like even the lead vocal but it's about everything and you can hear everything and every, you know you can hear how it's all working together like trying to get that clear picture of before it, it very much reminds me children's tele, television in the 70s was very frenetic it was the electric company and you'd have count you'd have you know the the county law whatever count dracula whatever his name was and then somebody would fall down a flight of stairs with a, a cake which but you were comfortable with somebody falling down the stairs with a cake because there was something that hooked you, you there was something of comfort because then they would do some math don't ever tell anyone I said math was comforting, but you know, like, there'd be, but there's an element to that in your music too, where it, in at one sense, it goes in a lot of different places, but there is a comfort level in the it, enough repetition to make me feel comfortable enough to be able to then listen to the rest of the song as well, without kind of, you know, without feeling a little unbalanced. They're just, I think you've, you've, you strike a nice balance with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, there are a lot of layers. There's a lot, you know, there, there is a lot going on, but just just enough to, enough to make you want to listen to it again and maybe again. Yeah, yeah exactly. just that much. And I have to ask a little bit about the, I, the penthouse seems like it's you know, about maybe living in a penthouse, you know, it's a little, little, little kind of debauchery going on there. Um, and then that, the sense of losing losing track of time yeah. as opposed to the times which is a little bit more of working and working and working for why and then it turns out which makes me of course wonder vis-a-vis -vis the pandemic when these songs were were written yeah they, i mean um i think they were both written in 2020. um yeah i think you know i can't hear you as well sorry to interrupt there i can't hear the the volume as well should i speak up Does that help okay. um it, yeah i mean penthouse is definitely like a, a story song um i guess that's how i would describe it i mean there's definitely some personal inflections as there is with like any song that we write um 
but that song was more of a collaborative effort between myself and uh, Nolan Jusilo, the keyboardist. Because he, he wrote the piano part, which I like just really dug and was like, okay, let's let's try writing a song together, you know, because um, some of my favorite experiences songwriting have come from a, just like a sit down collaborative, like you're on piano, I'm on guitar, let's hash through this, you know. So that's what we did. And what he was playing just like gave me this, just this like image and vibe of like someone who's out hustling on the streets or something and for one reason or another who knows not important he gets picked up she gets picked up and brought to this penthouse where they you know have this debaucherous like you said kind of experience and like get exposed to like this bizarre high life or whatever and come to figure out it's not all it's cracked up to be and uh end up kind of where they began and and just like as a writer, you know, there's something like sickeningly sweet about having that circle of, you know, is there even something to be learned? I don't know. You know, like really it's just, it, um, you know, that that's kind of where the song came from. And, you know, the times was a lot more, um, I mean, it was all me. I wrote everything and it was just uh, had to do more with how I was feeling about things at the time. <laughs> you know, and it's somewhat, you know, it's a more like vague song with some like kind of, you know, pick me up, see the world in a different way, whatever. But, you know, um, I was just trying to be honest, I guess. So, well, I mean, you've kind of nailed the two, two sides of the pandemic coin. There's a part where you're like, I don't know, does any of this matter? I'm having cookies for breakfast. You know, I mean, it is it's just to take the very kindergarten version of it. And then there's the other part where there's you're like, oh, you know, am I going to keep trying? Am I going to keep trying? Is it going to, is it going to turn out? Is it going to turn, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what, it, as I said, it, the more I think about it, it's such a great name. Cause I, I do remember, you know, two years ago, May of 2020 thinking, oh my God, I wish I could flip to the end of the book, man. You know, I, I could enjoy some of this a little bit more if I knew how long it was going to last and what was going to, you know, if I, I don't need the details, just give me the, you know, the broad sauce. So I think that you kind of have, as I said, you've, you've captured two of those hundred feelings that we had in that time. Yeah. Well, thank you. But, you know. Big question because you've I've, I've I've enjoyed very much the video for is it Ant the song because because I used to, I used to be a librarian and well, wear my glasses I I don't know if you would believe that or not but mm -hmm. <laughs> the card catalog all that you you must have plans for Vic I actually won't put it that way do you have plans for videos for these songs are you going to be working with Flavor World on something or are you working on, with someone else a little more you hear yes that's exactly what's happening. Um, yeah, for both Penthouse and The Times, we are collaborating with Flavor World. And um, I think the music videos are set to drop the same day as the songs do. So uh, this is the first I'm talking about it live, actually, or uh, saying anything about it. Um, but yeah, so both Penthouse and The Times will have a uh, music video accompanying them that was a result of a collaborative effort between flavor world and white line darko and i'm I, I just saw the finished like edit for both videos last week and like <laughs> drew from flavor world did the he did the shooting and he did the editing and he just did such a phenomenal job with capturing i think like the essence of what these songs are kind of about that I'm, I'm super stoked to see what people think when we when we release them. Okay, great. I won't I won't ask backup. I th I think he does a he does a good job, really kind of as you said, kind of grabbing the essence of something, getting the the details right that make you go, oh yeah, that that does make me feel warm. I wouldn't have known that, or you know, yeah. kind of drawing some of that stuff out. So that's fantastic. So it's so this tell us when the songs are dropping and about your show on june 10th and all the stuff that you got coming up for this okay um yeah so we're playing at the driftwood char bar uh on june 10th which is uh in south minneapolis there is a ten dollar cover charge if you're coming out um 
We are planning on having physical CDs of the two new songs pressed um, with like the, um, you know, cover art. It's in a nice little package sleeve. Um, and I think we'll also have some t-shirts available um, that will kind of have the turning up cover art on it. So it's gonna be a big hoo-ha. Um, and I believe the show starts at seven. Um, so I don't know if you're looking at the facts, but if I'm wrong, please correct me. <laughs> um, I had the date down. Yeah, that's. but I think their shows usually start about seven. So that's, yeah, um, sounds likely. And so we'll be performing and opening for us is a local act that we're really good friends with called Zippo Man. Uh, played quite a few shows with them and they are uh, an absolute force to be reckoned with um, on a stage. So I'm excited for the show. June 10th, Driftwood Char Bar, turning out Penthouse in the Times, White Line Dark. Perfect, perfect. I will include this in the notes, but where's the best place to find you online? Um, you can go to our website, whitelinedarko.com. You can go to our Bandcamp, which I think is bandcamp.com slash whitelinedarko. YouTube, uh, excellent place. We have a couple music videos up on our YouTube channel right now, um, which if you have the time, I would yeah. I would ask fun. And that you check them out. Yeah, um, that a and one was a lot of fun. Glad you brought that up. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple different spots and our, all of our music is available on any online music platform from uh, Spotify to YouTube to Apple Music to whatever, it's there. So many now. So many. It was easier when you just said, go to the local record store. <laughs> right. Easier for you, easier for us when we can do that. So uh, thank you, Kenneth, so much. Thank you so much for your time. I, it's just, I, I love the idea of the double single and it's really, it's it's rich music. It's a good balance. It's a, it's a fun snapshot of time. So yeah, nice, nice work. And thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for talking. I really appreciate the questions that you two asked. So thank you. <laughs>